Um, okay, we're gonna talk a little bit about where we're at with the elections. Um, so uh, I'm gonna throw up a image that we were working on um, in the last couple of minutes. I made some quick edits because I'm not the owner of this. So, um, so right now, uh, people still have until June 30th to pull papers and submit 50 signatures. So this still might look different. And in fact, I haven't looked at the uh, the city clerk's piece of paper in a week. So it might already be different and you're just getting that information. Um, but as of right now, this is all the information we have um, over who has pulled papers. Now uh, I have a list up for people that are uh, just listening to this, but I'm going to read most of it um, and talk a little bit about the candidates um, mm -hmm. and then give my take on uh, uh, specifically the Ward 3 race as well as the at-large race um, and a little bit about the timeline, I guess. Um, and so for the mayoral race, you know that there are three candidates, um, Paz, uh, Jeanette McCarthy, the incumbent, and then there's also the uh, first-time candidate, uh, Dwayne Champagne, that no one really knows anything about. Um, we had a, we, I had a phone call with the person. Um when he pulled papers, uh, I mean, I, and I know that he's knocking on doors. Um, and so I'm pretty confident that he's going to um, he's going to submit signatures. So there will be a preliminary. Um, we'll talk a little bit about preliminaries uh, later. Um, in, uh, in wards one and two, uh, there is no opponent. Uh, the incumbents have pulled papers. Um, I really wish someone would pull in ward one. Please, someone pull papers in ward one. Um, in ward three, uh, right now, um, there's Bill Hanley, who uh, ran in Ward 2. He sits on the health department. Um, he watches our show. Uh, there's Paul Tracy, um, retired cop who pulled papers to run against George last election. He almost won. Um, he's, his claim to fame is that he was a cop that uh, Paul Brasco once uh, used to help kick out a tenant. And uh he lost his job i think or was suspended i think he lost his job and then he sued the city uh he won the case um and uh was put on back on the force and then retired um and uh if that seems like an outrageous story and like why would anyone vote for him like i said he's already done this and he's already pulled papers and he did very well and so uh no one gives a shit about that for some reason um and then there's a uh, third new candidate, um, Barbara Ayala. Um, George Darcy, the Ward 3 incumbent, uh, made it known that while he pulled papers to run in Ward 3, he recently made the decision to run at large. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about that in a second. Um, no one's pulling papers in Wards 4, 5, or 6. John McLaughlin, Joey LaCava, Sean Durkee, they all don't have opponents. Would love to see all three of them challenged, some more than others. Um, in Ward 7, uh, there is a contend and contention uh, with the incumbent Paul Cates uh, with someone named Robert Davis. Um, I know nothing about him. Uh, no one I know knows anything about him. He declined an interview um, at the clerk's office when we were interviewing uh, people that had pulled papers. Um, uh, if I can butt in. Um... Yeah. This isn't on this page, but did I hear correctly that actually someone associated with Waltham Field Community Farm, John Tracy, is running in Ward Four against? John oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. He he did pull papers. This is um this is bad. Yeah, this is outdated information that I just forgot. Yeah, John Tracy is is pull papers to run uh, in Ward Four against John McLaughlin. That was such a uh, hiccup there. Thank you for correcting me there. Um, I actually don't know John Tracy personally. Uh, some of my friends know John Tracy. He's been on um. Uh, he's been very active in some of the nonprofits in the city. Um, I think people that are friends with me are going to like John Tracy. I really uh, could do without John McLaughlin. I think uh, he's, you know, I think he, John McLaughlin's an interesting person because he doesn't rock the boat in, in the city council. I wouldn't say he's as vocal as other people. I wouldn't say he's vocal as most people, uh, but he's, he's um, elected time and time again. And so I believe that he is good at constituent feedback. I'm not in Ward 4. Um, I don't do Ward 4 things, so I don't know that to be true. Um, but I mean, you know, we can't just look at this only from like what people do in the city council because 
there's there's more to what to to the job of city councilor than just like doing things in the city council. It's also about being being responsive um, and getting back to people and uh, being active in your community, holding meetings. Um, I don't think actually John holds many meetings, but he's got to do something. He's got to be doing something right for him to keep getting elected all the time. So that's what I, that, I'm just mm -hmm. trying to be fair. Um, in my in my critiques here, uh, but John Tracy is, has pulled papers to run against him, so there will be a contention there. Yeah. Um, so and and no relation to Paul Tracy. No relation to Paul Tracy. Um, you'll see that a lot um, in Waltham. Uh, also related to Paul Tracy, uh, we should play the clip from the uh, community input session here for that one. Oh yeah, yeah. We forgot to mention a um, uh, friend of the show, Daniel Sari's comments uh, at the citizen input hearing. Uh, but it's actually more poignant to include them here uh, because he talks about Paul Tracy. Board 8, uh, Channel 781 news member friend uh, Chris Hammer has pulled papers throwing against uh, Kathy Ann Harris. I'm very excited to see that. Um, in Ward 9, with, uh, with Jonathan Paz um, running for mayor, his seat will be open. We have Eamon Dawes, uh, a friend of the show, been on several times. Um, and Robert Logan, who held the seat for, I think, 30 years, probably, probably a little less than that. Um, before I uh, said he was never going to run again, but why wouldn't he? Uh, I wouldn't say he has all the advantages of being the incumbent, uh, but he has most of the advantages of being an incumbent. I would say pretty much de facto in incumbent. Um, for school committee, you have all three incumbents that are full papers, uh, and then you have um, two uh, uh, first time candidates um, Tammy, I'm not going to try to pronounce his last name. I apologize, Tammy for not doing that, um, as well as uh, James Zangy. Um, I learned recently, I didn't know anything about James, uh, uh, that he is Tom Stanley's, one of Tom Stanley's aides. Um, he's also very young, I think he's like 25. Um, but as soon as I heard that he was Tom Stanley's aide, he's completely dead to me. Um, and so I have, I have no opinion other than that. Um, uh, I have friends that say Tammy is a good person. I don't know much about Tammy. I think they have a child in the dual language school. But I'm probably just going to vote for Tammy based on very little information um, until new information surfaces. I believe she lives up the street from me. I'm definitely voting for her. Cool. Um, okay. And then at large, uh, these are where I'm going to talk a little bit more. Um, at large, you've got all the people that have pulled uh, that are comments that have pulled papers. You also have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. You have seven new people. That have pulled papers. What that means is that there's going to be a preliminary at large. Um, so as of right now, there's going to be preliminary for the mayoral race and the at large race. So there's going to be um, a preliminary in every ward for either one of them, if either one of them had happened. Um, so uh, in September, uh, the mayoral um, race and the at large race are going to dwindle. By one, by one. <laughs> so everyone's going to vote. You are all going to get a standing for where we're at. Um, and then one person from each, the mayoral and the at large, is going to get knocked off by one. Um, and of course, it should be said that that's if all these people submit signatures. Um, I know most of these people. Um, and so I'm feeling pretty confident. The only person I know absolutely nothing about um, is Susan uh, Rosenfelder, um, my fellow uh, Jewish uh, comrade, uh, but Susan, please submit signatures, uh, wherever you are. Um, and so uh, George Darcy pulled papers to run at large. Uh, this is big news. Um, I, might, I might make a list really quick, but maybe not. Um, George Darcy has uh, represented Ward 3 for a very long time. Um, I think besides, I think it's, it goes Kathleen at 40 years. I think Tom Stanley has George beat by one term and then it's George Darcy. So, uh, George Darcy has been on the city council for a very long time in Ward 3. Uh, and, um, I think it's, I think it's kind of clear why he decided to pull paper, uh, pull, uh, switch to at large, what he's saying is that he thinks he can serve the community better at large. I think his DUI uh, is, has, a, has a large part to do with that. 
you know, a big fan of George Darcy. Um, but I'm going to be very transparent about that. I think that definitely had most of what to do with that. Um, because it's very, uh, I mean, I, I've been telling people since as soon as it happened, it would be so easy if I lived in Ward 3. I didn't have to be a candidate. If I didn't like Ward, if I didn't like George and I lived in Ward 3, I would plaster every telephone pole with flyers about George's DUI. It would be so easy. It would just, it would, I would, it would just, um, and so I always assumed that he was going to uh, lose. It would be, a, I think it would be a close race. I assumed he was going to lose in Ward 3, which would be sad. He decided to switch at large. Um, and so that does, uh, that does many things. In Ward 3, it's going to be a conservative stronghold. Uh, most of North Waltham is going to be controlled uh, by very conservative people. Um, how do I, what, what do I mean when I say that? Ward 3 is the most conservative ward if you are judging it based on Elizabeth Warren's run in 2018 and the yes on four data, uh, which was the transgender question, um, which I did a lot of work for uh, doing phone banks and things like that. Um, based on the data from those two things, Ward 3 is the most conservative ward in all things. Um, and the second most conservative ward is Ward 1. And like half of Waltham, because of density, uh, is those two wards. Um, I wouldn't say half, but it's, 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 it's less dense, so it's bigger. It's, it's very big. Um, Geographically, it's a large part of Waltham. Yes. I think by that's by, by surface area. Yeah. Um, and so... Most, uh, like a lot of Waltham is now just going to be controlled by Anthony Fauci, who is blazing in his conservatism, um, and either Bill Hanley or Paul Tracy, both pretty blazing in their conservatism. Um, uh, oh, yeah, Ayala, I'll get to that. Uh, Ayala, I, I've met a couple times already. Uh, we, we chatted. I really like Ayala. Uh, uphill battle for Ayala. Um, uphill battle. I bet George and Dorsey, sir. Um, I bet a lot of our friends, uh, uh, do that, but it's just, it's just a very, very conservative ward. Um, I think the people of Ward 3 keep voting George in because George is born and bred in Waltham. Um, and they, he has a way of speaking to people, uh, that doesn't let his national views. I think he's a Green Party member, uh, voting Green Party member. Um, but he talks to Ward 3 in a way that, uh, just allows him to be voted on, um, again and again. Uh, so Ayala, uh, love you, uh, you know, hoping your campaign's good. I'm sure you can bring a lot of good issues. Winning is not, is not the only thing. Um, uh, but uphill battle for sure. So very sad about Ward 3. It's about to get worse, I think. Um, so at large, this also, uh, is bad for the at large, uh, non-incumbents. The only good thing about George doing this is that George will remain on the city council. Because George, like I said, very popular. He does well in Ward 3, the most conservative ward in Waltham. He's going to do great in every other ward. Um, I think he immediately walks into the at-large seats. I don't think he's going to have a problem at all. I think he'll be near the top with very little campaign, which historically he has not done very much of. <laughs> um, and so what that means, you know, most of the time when you're running at large, you're, vi uh, you're vying with all the non-incumbents for one spot, you're voting for, you're all gunning for the bottom of the barrel. Um, and you just hope that the the least vote getting person gets knocked off and you are that person that gets on there. Um, and so with George pretty much walking in, of course, you know, I could eat my words and he could, he could not, he could, he could lose. Uh, but that's, that, this is just me guessing. Um, uh, so that bottom spot, which is also held by Colleen Bradley McCarthy, uh, mm -hmm. should, should be said is now no longer up for grabs. It is now like, you're now to have to work twice as hard because you're going for that number two spot, um, who who hopefully is Colleen. Um, and so you're really hoping for number three. And so that's almost impossible as a non-incumbent. Um, and so and so all of these, all of our friends here, the Emily Superior, Emma Zumas, um, everyone else, they're all like they just their chances of getting elected now become much much smaller. Um, does do you guys have thoughts about that? That's just me talking. Like you, who who knows if that's true? I think it's going to be interesting to see what the turnout actually ends up being for this. It's probably going to be extremely low, but 
that also doesn't necessarily um, hurt people in that kind of way because it's going to be a specific amount of people that are tuned into things. I think that are me turning out for that. Yeah, all so, things are possible. So yeah, yeah. With the low turnout, if you mobilize people, you're going to win. If you work really goddamn hard, you're going to win. Um, but how hard is it for non incumbents to go for that number two spot? It's going to be pretty hard. I would love if uh, people realized how bad of city councilors Carlos Vidal and Patrick O'Brien are, who are at the bottom of the barrel, um, and then get swapped for someone who uh, is better. But it's so hard. And that's why that's why George, you know, I was talking about the anecdote of uh, flyering uh, telephone poles uh, against George Darcy. Um, it, he becomes much less vulnerable running at large because it's so hard to target people at large. You know, we, we talk about some of the worst people in city council being at large. You know, why don't we just target them? Because we need we would need to spend thousands and thousands of dollars to target anyone at large. It would take so much time and energy because every single person can vote for them. And so um, if you're if you're not running in a ward race, if you're running at large or it's something that requires the entire city to vote for you, it's incredibly hard to go negative against that person because it requires so much more resources um, than just targeting the people that live in the ward. And so George, much less vulnerable to that kind of criticism. Um, although I wouldn't be surprised if I start seeing it still. Um, and so people have until June 30th to uh, pull papers and submit 50 signatures. And then the election season starts. People are already um, knocking on doors. You might have uh, already had candidates knocking on doors. I'm interested in all the literature. I'm interested in the talking points. I'm interested to see debates. Um, and uh, stay tuned for preliminaries in September instead of November. So we'll have a good sense for at large and the mayoral race um, going into uh, November. 